Why did I change my patrol rifle? When I decided to update my patrol rifle, I started out with the heart of the rifle, that being the upper receiver group. With this one, I went with the Geisley Duty Upper. This is a complete duty upper from Geisley. It has the Mark 16 rail on it, which is all M-Lock slotted. It's 13 and a half inches in length. I went with a 16 inch barrel on this one, uh, but with this, it does have the Geisley gas length system on there, which is just slightly longer than a mid-length. And from shooting this already, what I can tell you guys compared to my last one, which was mid-length, even with a comp, and I actually ended up leaving the A2 birdcage on here, is that this rifle itself actually shoots quite a bit flatter. What I also did with the upper was I actually upgraded the buffer and buffer spring combo in the rear. I went with the G42 model on there, what they have, which is a braided buffer spring, and then an H1 buffer on here. And this rifle is way flatter than my other one and how it was set up. In addition to that, what's really sweet about these Geisley uppers in general is a couple things. One, their rails, are probably second to none. It is extremely smooth. There is no rough edges whatsoever. It's all honed. I mean, I don't know that I felt a handguard that is as smooth as these are and as finished that these seem. So then also too, what I will say is really sweet about this is the Geisley Bolt Carrier Group, which is their reliability enhanced bolt carrier group. It's a very, very slick bolt carrier. They have a nano weapon technology on there, which Sounds like a bunch of fancy words, but what I can tell you guys after putting hundreds of rounds through this already is that I've never seen a bolt carrier group before when I go to strip it down and I clean it, that everything just wipes off super easy. Even some of the carbon buildup that you get on the back of the bolt and in the rear there just wipes off. No scraping required whatsoever. I've shot some steel case through this as well as your brass case stuff. And it's just a really sweet upper. Um, the best way I can make this seem to you guys is that, you know, I left my Troy lower on here and upgraded basically the whole heart of the rifle. Are you looking for an earbud that can drown out those whining kids and drown out that nagging wife who wants you to load the dishwasher, but also be your favorite earbud on the range when you're shooting your favorite firearm? Grab yourself a set of GS Extreme 2.0s and why don't you save yourself some money and click the link in the description and that'll save you 15% off on your next earbud purchase. Now back to the video. And then next thing that is very obvious on here is I had a Trigicon MRO. I will start this off by saying zero problems whatsoever in seven years of leaving a Trigicon MRO on. I left it in the back of a patrol car. It stayed out in extreme temperatures, hot, cold, whatever it was. It never failed me. Always held zero. Absolutely a perfect red dot and I never had any issues with it. Why I changed. The reason I changed because it was on there for seven years and I wanted something different. I mean, that's the flat out answer. There's no special answer behind it because again, that was a very, very nice red dot. But when Aimpoint came out, the new Duty RDS, I wanted to give it a shot. And so far, I am very, very impressed with this. The biggest difference I'll say between this one and the MRO is, is two things. Is one, the objective window on here is not as big, so the picture you get is not as large. But the glass clarity and what I'm getting for light transmission through this and low light environments is better. What I do like also about it is that what I've noticed is that in very, very bright sunlight, I do not need to adjust the dot from the setting seven, which is what they say gives you the longest length of battery life at constant on at 30,000 hours. It's a little bit less than the MRO, but what I can say from that MRO was that when it was really bright outside, I found myself having to turn that knob up a notch or two in order to actually see the red dot. With this one, I do not. It does come with capped lenses on here for ocular aiming on the front here. What if you don't know about that, is that if you're shooting a rifle, you know, a red dot in particular, you're gonna shoot with both eyes open. So when you look through here, what happens is your eyes and your brain actually superimposes the red dot on whatever you're looking through with your left eye. And it's almost like you're literally looking through the caps as if they're both open. So they have that, so if you have to pull the rifle out in a defensive situation of a patrol car like myself, and you're not paying attention, you're stressed out, and you pull that out, you'll be able to see and aim just fine. And then obviously you get your aim point quality. What you also notice is that I've also switched the rise on here. This is the Unity Tactical one. This one has iron sights built into the lower portion of it here. So you get basically, as just as if you're using regular iron sights, instead of having flip up ones on here, I no longer have those. I'm able to take that off, save a little bit of weight, get a rock solid mount. And then also this promotes a heads up style of shooting. So when I get up on my rifle, I don't have to go down the cheek weld. I'm able to keep my eyes up and see a little bit better 
in defensive situations. And so far, what I've noticed is I really, really enjoy it, especially when I'm at work and I'm wearing my concealed body armor. It's very, very easy to still see out of this because at times when you're wearing body armor, it's harder to get down on the rifle and see. It actually starts to strain your neck if you do a lot of shooting. And in addition to that, if I throw in a plate carrier or something like that, this is much easier to see through. Do I think that this has a purpose for the average civilian with no body armor, no plate carrier? Not necessarily, but it does promote, again, heads up style shooting, which most people should be practicing, especially when using a red dot. The next feature on my rifle, which I did end up changing, was going to the rifle mounted light. Before I had a stream light, true me well, absolutely no issues with that. I just wanted something that would provide a little bit more lumens as well as more light throw. So I went with the cloud defensive. This is the micro rain on here. Is this gonna get changed possibly to the full size rain? I do think I will just because they just, just came out with the 2.0 model. In addition to that, I flat out love this light. I think I wanna put it on a different weapon. So, but what's nice about these lights in general is they come with cable management. The switches on him on here are very, very easy to activate. You're not getting any issues or anything like that where you're gonna you know, have any ADs as far as for activating your light. It's very, very like positive in order to actually hit that light, you have to be really trying to do it. You know, I can get my hand up here and grip it completely and you know, with a C clamp there and I'm not having any issues with actually bumping those switches. So it's really, really nice that way. And then the last thing that I changed my rifle was I went with this Grove Tech Sentinel two point sling. It's very, very easy to adjust. It has a pad here on the rear. The reason I went with the pad too is that when you're slinging the rifle and you just go over your neck as opposed to underneath the arm so you could do easy, you know, left, right-handed shooting, whatever it might be. And also too, I found that from shooting and practicing things like that, I've started to enjoy that style of sling mount a little bit better than actually throwing it underneath my arm as well as it makes it easy to throw it back on at the back of a patrol car, take it off, and then throw it back around my back when I have to actually, you know, go hands-on with somebody. So it's a very, very nice rifle setup super happy with this and at the end of the day if you're a police officer or you're somebody that's going to build a rifle or have a rifle for defensive use and you're going to let's say use it against a threat my recommendation is that to have the best that you can afford and myself i carried the same rifle near the same configuration for seven years i wanted to update it so that my rifle when i look at it and the features it has on it at the very least compete with all the other best ones on the market I came from the mud There's dirt on my hands Strong like a tree There's roots where I stand Oh, I've been running from the law Hope they won't shoot me down soon